Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I am your host, Elliot Pierre, and we're going to start this show off the same way we start every episode off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, and the fact that you spend it with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. Oh, she caught me, loves. You're listening to the Max City Morning Show. All right, and we're back. Okay, I'm excited about this guest uh, today. As you guys know, I don't introduce my guest, so I'm going to let him do that himself. But I've known this guy for many years. We've gone to school together back in the day, but we've never had a real chance to hang out and chat as adults. So I'm excited about this one. So on that note, sir, please uh, tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me here today. No uh, I'm Jason McDougall, um, owner-operator of Climate Control Limited. Uh, born and raised here in Fort McMurray, uh, as you know, like you said, went to school together, went to school with your brother. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, grew up here, graduated, kind of, and then uh, took off to Calgary for a couple of years, Canmore for a couple of years, and then decided, you know, I wanted to be back home with my friends and family and okay. uh, came back to Fort McMurray and, uh, you know, started adult life, as you say. There you go. Yes, so sir. right before we started to film, though, you said something I didn't know. I always thought you went to Merck for the whole time, big up to Merck, but you were just saying that you transferred to Westwood for a little bit. Yeah, grade nine and 10, I did father Merck and I had a couple really good buddies I grew up with. Okay. And, uh, you know, in grade 10, they took off. Uh, both of them moved out of town okay. and I had some more good buddies at Westwood. And for some reason I just, you know, let's make a switch. And so I switched over to Westwood to be with some other group of friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, just for purely that reason. And, you know, it was a nice little change and, uh, I missed Merck at the same time, but it was nice to kind of yeah. see both worlds. Wait, see, this is crazy. <laughs> My parents would have never allowed that. What was that conversation like with your mom and dad when you're like, hey, I want to switch high schools? That's a good question. Um, I think I pretty much just like, this is happening. And um, it just kind of happened. There wasn't too much of a conversation there. Really? I think about it, yeah. Wow, you have very just, understanding parents. My parents are saints, yeah. hands down the best parents. Yeah. I, uh, I know. I think you've, you've met oh, uh, yeah, dad yeah, quite a few yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. Your dad's awesome. Like I remember back in the day, um, I was working for a company and I interviewed your dad. Oh yeah. He came in and I had known him prior to like, just cause Fort McMurray is a small town, but I got a chance to sit down and like do a formal interview with him yeah. and he blew my socks off. I was like, this guy's unreal. <laughs> and I just remember like, I don't know if it was in the interview or if I called him later on, I was like, there's no way we can afford you. I'm just like going like, but you deserve every penny yeah. that you're about to get. Like he is a very impressive individual. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but he was, uh, as far as companies are concerned, he was helping you with this organization. Yeah. You started. So like, tell me about like the company and how that all got off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So I started climate control about almost nine years ago now and uh, just decided to kind of step out on my own, try a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky growing up. My parents always put me in like entre young entrepreneurship courses, young leadership courses, army cadets. So mm -hmm. always had a desire to kind of run an, my own show. Right. And so nine years ago, I stepped out. Uh, a couple of clients had asked me to start my own business. So I went off on my own mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was good for about two or three years. Got about three or four guys going. Yeah. And uh, it was just me and a couple guys and then um, ended up going for the fire. I had to go evacuate down south. Right. Uh, so I landed with mom and dad down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just realized the opportunity coming back to Fort McMurray. There was, a, my phone was ringing 10 times a day. Hey, we're going to need this. We're going to need this. We're going to need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to need some duct cleaning services. We're going to need some help with our HVAC systems. We're going to need help rebuilding. Yeah. And like, I was on the phone. We hired about six people that one month we were away. And I was like, dad, I was at his house. I was like, I'm really going to need some help. Like, yeah, I don't know how to manage 15 people. Like I can do five, but yeah. 15 is going to be a big step. And so I needed some help with some processes and like okay. procedures. And so he came and just kind of helped us get like that basis set up so that can, you know, we had the building blocks to grow into a medium sized company. Nice. And so he came back with us and me and him drove into town with a loaded trailer, duck cleaning, all this stuff. Like I couldn't yeah, have fit yeah. another thing on that trailer. Yeah. And we showed back up in town first day we were allowed back in and hit the ground running. And uh, he stayed with us for about four and five years, just kind of helping us grow that business uh, yeah. internally, making sure it's just running smooth. Right. He was right. the oil and the grease of that place yeah. for sure. There every morning, shoveling the snow off the <laughs> sidewalk, getting <laughs> yeah. things done, making sure we were successful. That's awesome. And now he's retired officially. And officially, about three months ago, he uh, he retired for good. 
Nice. Good yeah. for him, man. I had to pretty much push him out the door, but yeah. uh, I'm glad that he finally did go. And Well, I've bumped into your dad a few times since like he started helping and not helping, but working with you. Yeah. Um, and he loved doing it. Like you, like when you enjoy what you're doing, it's not really work. Yeah. You know? And like, yeah. obviously he loves you as his son and he has a passion for what you guys are doing. So I could see how it would be challenging for him to be like, no, I want to stop doing this because <laughs> it'd be fun. Good for you though. I think that's very mature of you in regards to asking your dad for help. I, I mean, I feel fortunate too that I don't think a lot of people maybe couldn't have that same relationship with their father and work with him day to day. And I, right. just, I just feel very fortunate that we were able to do that together. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, he was just the biggest help. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah I couldn't do it. I love no? my dad. I love you, GP, <laughs> AKA Uncle Silky. But like working with my dad day in and day out would be a struggle. Like I don't mind asking my dad for help and like, in small doses, I think we could work together, mm-hmm. but like on a full time basis, we would butt heads. Yeah. There, there's no doubt about that. So we oh. should get him in for an episode. Oh, <laughs> listen, GP on this show, it would be epic, but it won't happen. GP, <laughs> it won't happen. But yeah, that's good for you for like asking for that help. Yeah, and I yeah. mean, there was the odd times that we butted heads and stuff. Yeah, of but course. I mean, that's just natural with the way things that's go. Right. But it was. Uh, Best experience. Anybody so, in a in a leadership role is going to clash with anybody else in a leadership role. It doesn't need to be your dad. That's right. <laughs> so as far as the services, I don't totally know what you guys do. Like I know there's a furnace aspect because I filmed a video with you a few years ago yes. like at uh, Mitchell's. Yes. So, but since then, you guys have grown in regards to your services and the size of the company. So what is it? that you offer as far as your services. Yeah, absolutely. So we got about uh, 15 people. We've got HVAC, refrigeration, plumbers, gas fitters, sheet metal mechanics, and we're pretty much a commercial residential HVAC plumbing duct cleaning organization. So okay. our main focus, what we were, we were trying to grow on is kind of, um, or I guess our bread and butter is commercial maintenance, HVAC servicing and retrofitting. Right. So restaurants, um, rec centers, um, shopping okay. centers. We look after the HVAC, the heating, cooling, uh, yeah. plumbing, making sure that they have everything they need, fixing things, replacing units. Okay. And that's kind of our day-to-day. About 80% of our business is commercial HVAC. Okay. And uh, then we do some residential. We don't do a ton of it, but we do help out anyone. If your furnace goes down, we'd be glad to come over and help you out. But right. Uh, right. commercials are main focus. And then a lot of duct cleaning as well. We've yeah. got, uh, pretty much every day since the fire, since we got back, we've had one duct cleaning trailer. Running twice a day yeah. since then. No yeah. doubt. I, yeah. mean, I think the duct cleaning is very important just in regards to, like, yes, the fire component, but based on where we live, there's a lot of things in the air. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. A lot yeah. of dust, a lot of dirt, a lot of construction takes place here. Yeah. And so, a lot of things in the air everywhere, Elliot. It's air. Everything is in air. Well, oh, fair enough. Okay, Tanner, thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner's the best. <laughs> so, Fort McMurray, what are some of the benefits and downsides to like managing your own company? Ooh, um, definitely a benefit of being born and raised here. I love being a part of this community yeah. everywhere we go. Like I, I know the business owners. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I went to high school, like with half the people here. So That's right. that sense of community and, um, growing up here, being involved in the YMCA, being involved in the Legion, being involved with the nonprofit organizations and being able to help them out yeah. is something that just brings me a lot of joy to be able to you know, provide a good service to these people that you yeah. know, are nonprofits. That's right. That's um, right. and just being able to help out. I mean, my favorite thing hands down about being an HVAC tech was like my first day is like, people are happy to see you walk in the door because you're there to fix a problem for them. That's right. And then people are happy to see you leave because they don't have to pay you anymore. That's right. That's and right. it's just always people are happy around you. And so it's just, and yeah. you help provide comfort and it's just a nice feeling. Um, the downsides. Yeah. Employees. Yeah. It is one of the hardest things to find good, skilled trade employees in right. for McMurray. Yeah. I was going to ask you that in regards to like a, si- a, a company that has 15 individuals who are specialized mm-hmm. in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's tough. My background prior to this, like used to be human resources. So I get the recruitment process. Yeah. Where are you finding these people? Are like they being homegrown? Or are you having to go outside of town to find them? Like, how's that been working for you? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Um, we have one employee that's gone the full, probably six years with us from duck cleaner to he's going for his journeyman uh, ticket here on January 1st. So shout out to wow. Colton. Congratulations for him. So uh, go. he's gone right through the whole program. And other than that, we've got about three or four homegrown people. And then a, uh, you know, we do some advertising in Calgary and Edmonton and try and bring people up. 
Uh, one or two people do a little bit of shift work here and there, but realistically, we want people to live in yeah. in town and make this part of their yeah. home. Yeah. Um, so I would say 13 of the 15 do live in Fort McMurray, and it's it's a challenge. But um, the biggest thing I say is trying. I, I try and make the organization somewhere that people want to work. Right. I want to make it a desirable place. People show up every day. They're happy to be there. Yeah. You know, they get to go home happy, and you yeah, know, that's the biggest thing, and that kind of drives people to want to be at yeah. work in Fort McMurray because it is a bit of a sell. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. you should move from Calgary and live in Fort McMurray. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sometimes right. people yeah, are Alicia. Pretty... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alicia needs to move yeah. to Fort McMurray from yeah, Calgary. Yeah, Alicia Pierre, listen to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so you've been, that's a good approach of trying to get people here. I truly believe, like, culture. I'm trying 100%. to make, like, that employee culture that people want to be around. 100%. Yeah. That's, yeah. So how did you get into this industry? Like, you went to high school, you graduated. This is not something that you probably got talk to the student or guidance counselor about yeah. how did you find yourself like doing what you do um that's a good question how i ended up there um right when i finished high school i became a power engineer dad wanted me to go do some power engineering because mm. uh, it's a good solid trade you right. make good money and you'll never have to worry about it anymore. okay so okay. i did that for about six months got my ticket my fourth class was on site okay and i found it was kind of sitting around doing a lot of nothing i that's read right. some books i cooked some meals i didn't do a lot of work and so at uh. 19 i needed my brain going yeah, yeah, yeah i quit and moved down to calgary and mm. um just started just looking at opportunities i was running an irrigation company down there and just kind of Poking around. I like to yeah. fix things. I like to always had a meter on me. I like to just kind of fix whatever. And then mm. I'm not sure how the opportunity came, but I got a job offer at Honeywell uh, okay. to be a first year apprentice in refrigeration. Yeah. And so they moved me out to Canmore and um, I'm trying to think how that conversation even happened. I think it was probably a, a contact through dad somewhere that he knew I was kind of looking for something that yeah. can just I like fix and stuff all the time. So right. Right. Uh, I think that opportunity just came along and moved out to Canmore and started for Honeywell. I lived in a hotel for six months to make sure that, you know, I really wanted to actually do this first. Oh, cool. And uh, I would never recommend living in a hotel for six months. Yeah. But uh, it was uh, it was definitely a, a time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I lived in Canmore for a couple of years. It was awesome. Started the refrigeration apprenticeship there and um, loved it. Same thing right off the first day. Like people are just happy to see you show up. Yeah. And you can fix something. You get accomplishments every day. Cause, and it's always a different uh, atmosphere. You're in a hotel one day, you're in somebody's house, you're at the YMCA, you're at the, every day is something different. Yeah. And so it's just. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool, man. All right. Tanner gave me the signal that he is ready for the Mac City Minute. He's going to ask you some questions. I don't know what they're going to be. I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Yeah. Tanner, hit him with the Mac City Minute. All righty. Question number one. What is the biggest thing you missed when you left Fort McMurray? Oh, definitely friends, friends and family. I went down on my own pretty much. And um, yeah, just having those like high school friends you grew up with and knew like close friends. Yeah, definitely. Question number two, what is your favorite part of running a business in the town you grew up in? Uh, the friendships uh, and business relationships that you have. Question number three, what is one personal goal you have for yourself from owning a business? More free time. Uh, um, lately, it's been a lot of just go, go, go. And so uh, it's changing. I've managed to uh, accomplish a couple goals uh, mm -hmm. in the business. And so now it's becoming more personal goals of uh, enjoying more of my time and not so much work time. Question number four. What is the most unexpected job you've had to work on? <laughs> um, I ended up getting a service call to a house. Yeah. Uh, Normally, you just walk in ready to go, but it happened to be um, where the entertainers for Showgirls were, uh, were all staying at once. And uh, so there was about four of them in the, in the basement just hanging out, and uh, it was quite the entertaining uh, service call. It was probably the best one I ever had. It was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Did love is it. that like a reverse order the stripper event, you know, like where the repair guy comes but he's actually a repair guy and everybody else is strippers? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little too hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, and your final question, what is one reason somebody would want to work for your company in Fort McMurray? Uh culture. As uh, Elliot said earlier, the biggest thing is I want everyone to show up today happy i want everyone to leave happy every day and we just provide resources for all our guys anything they need we give them those have been your five questions thanks man so back in the day i used to be a recruiter so i never lived in a hotel for six <laughs> months straight 
but I did live in hotels for about three years. So let's hear your experience living in, like, was it the same hotel for the, the whole same time? hotel room? Yeah. For wow. six months. So what about it? Did you not like? Oh God, it was a hotel room. I, uh, yeah. I really learned to cook on a George Foreman it was probably one of the pros. I had oh. like this grilled cheese sandwich with garlic and bacon and cheese yeah. figured out down to the T. So it wasn't like a, um, you didn't have a kitchenette. No kitchenette. Oh no. It was a microwave and a bar fridge. Wow. It was terrible. That terrible would, terrible. that would have been terrible. Yeah. Holy. House cleaners came once a week. I had to have like, I had to keep my tires because I went in the middle of the season. The tires were on the other bed. So it was two single beds. So I had to keep my tires on the other bed. And it was just like this storage room slash sleeping quarters. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And there wasn't another hotel you could find that had like a kitchenette? Not for the price that I was paying. Nope. I was pretty broke. So. Okay. <laughs> yep. Wow. I yeah. Was okay. Budget. We had very different hotel experiences then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I loved living in hotels. I'm not going to lie. I was just like, What's he talking about? Why is it challenging? I was just like, they come, they clean your room every day for you. Oh no, yeah. housekeeping was once a week. Oh geez. That and uh, somebody was paying for their own hotels and yeah. somebody else had a company's <laughs> credit card to pay for their hotels. That's exactly it. So. I think that made a big difference. <laughs> yeah. I've stayed in some really amazing hotels, I gotta say. Mm, yes. So, and I've stayed in some really bad ones. Like my, my thing with, uh, not hotels, but motels. I've always been kind of mm. like, weary mm -hmm, about motels mm -hmm. it's kind of weird to like you open the door and the parking lot is like right, right there. there something murdery about it that's right yeah so i've had to stay in lots of motels hotels even if it's a bad hotel it's still a hotel yeah motels, and it's nice it's comforting yeah i've never done the motel i don't think i've ever been brave enough oh i've had to do it many times yeah yeah because like some of the communities that i had to go to yeah. um to recruit in and some of the like the service areas where i had to like help with like human resource manuals and stuff were like pretty backwards. And yeah, like the communities that I was in didn't have a hotel. Your only option was the motel. Yeah. Yeah. I got it a is. creepy story that I'll share really quick. Yeah. I was in a motel and this was a motel that actually had like a gym in it, which I thought was like, Hey, because I like to, I like to work out, I like to run and stuff. So that was something I always look for. Is there like, it doesn't have to be a huge gym, just like a treadmill and some weights. That's all I'm looking for. And, uh, anyways, so I went to the gym and I was having a good time and I used the gym. I was there for a week. So I was in the gym for three days. And then on day, uh, four, I had to go to talk to front desk about something. And I realized that there was a camera and I was like looking at it, a TV and the TV only looked at the gym. Hmm. And I was just asking, it's like, Hey, uh, does that security camera like flash into other things or is it like only in the gym he's like yeah it's only in the gym like so when i'm in uh, when i'm in there working out like are you looking at me <laughs> and the guy's just like yeah he's like you're a fast runner and i'm like uh, okay Th thanks, thanks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this guy because there was nothing else to do in this community i won't say what the community was like i was his channel so I was like, watched you that's, <laughs> that's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Good thing you were just working out in there. That's right. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. So uh, it was, uh, now everybody watches me. So <laughs> he was my first fan. <laughs> so I have a question for you because you're born and raised in Fort McMurray. Yes. Um, it's a, def it's a, it's an issue. It's a, it's a question. It's a hot, it's a hot topic. Mm -hmm. You might get in trouble for your answer. Okay. Where's your local pizza spot? Oh, yeah. Hughes. 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 Okay. That's Hands a safe down. answer. Yeah. You can't go wrong with Hughes. No. Best pizza in town. Since we were like 16, you yep. get in a car, you leave Merck yep. at the time, you yep. go get Hughes. That's you right. You get seven pizzas <laughs> for $4. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you're lucky if he's open. That's yes, right. You That's, have to. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, you never know. It's just a show up and hope. Yeah. Every day you roll the dice with Hughes. That's right. But now have you been lately with the arcade that he's got? Oh man. My little guy loves it there. Like it's we, good to see these small businesses adapting. I oh mean, yeah. it was a little bit as COVID was happening, but yeah. you have to be adapting and changing and evolving right. to be successful. And That's it's exactly great it. to see people do yeah. that stuff. So your so, kid loves it there. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the food's good. And like, it's so funny cause you go to other like fast food restaurants and stuff and you get like paper plates or like not even a plate or like just a bag and you go to Hughes and he has like ceramic plates like Real. you have at home. 
And my kid's just like, what is going on here? <laughs> and then he gets changed and he gets to play the video games. And he's just like, this place is different, but in the best way possible. Like, awesome. it's there's not too many of those left in town that it's like, this is an old school family owned mm -hmm. business restaurants that aren't necessarily great and that's what makes them great yeah like you don't feel like you're going there and you're getting the same thing everywhere you feel like you're going into like somebody's local shop and getting a homemade pizza yeah yeah so yeah yeah keegan loves hughes awesome so my dude man that's it i know tanner hits his watch a little bit so i know we went a little bit over on time but that's okay that's what the show's all about sure. anytime you want to come back i've got so many more questions for you we could chat way longer than this so please feel free to come back again appreciate it thank you that being said though before everybody leaves they get a shameless shout out or plug so you got the lights on you you got the camera on you have fun uh, i would just say that um you know with covid here i think a lot of our nonprofit organizations around town like northern lights health center uh, spca are really in need and some help right now so if anyone has some time to volunteer or has some extra change lying around i think that's a really good spot to uh to put some effort there you go. Great shout out for the non for profits. All right. Fort McMurray with Buffalo and the rest of the world. That's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I just died at this. That's another Max City Morning Show done. Talk about quenching your ugly thirst.